the chapter 5 of your ICD-10 CM 2020, where is your mental, behavioral, and neurodevelopmental disorders from your F01 to your F99. So this is just a quick guidelines because there's just a few guidelines that is under your chapter 5, which is um, very important for us to discuss because definitely they were going to ask at least one or two questions in the actual exam. And we also normally encounter this in the actual coding, especially if you are assigned to your behavioral health coding, and which is very much in demand um, based on the market right now. So it's very important for you guys to understand the guidelines for your ICD-10 CM. 2020 so before moving on don't forget to watch all the other videos that i have from your chapter one chapter two chapter three chapter four and chapter five and especially the general coding guidelines this um the introduction to your ict 10 cm social alphabetic index and your tabular list don't forget to watch those guys very important to watch those videos first before moving on to your chapter 5 mental behavioral and neurodevelopmental disorders okay so let's start with the first guidelines that we have we have the pain disorders related to psychological factors so when we are talking about pain disorders related to psychological factors we are um these are common examples here are your phantom pain like that so we have a code for f45.41 if the reason of the pain that the patient may, are, may encounter is exclusively psychological pain. What do you mean by that? I mean, it's the clinical judgments of the physician or the provider that the main reason why the patient may suffer pain is due to purely psychological pain, meaning there's no um, actual pain. I mean, there's no reason like... Um, there's no chronic pain being emphasized, but the patient is claiming that the he has or she has a pain that is, she is feeling right now so if there's no uh, if the provider uh, diagnosed that there's no uh, I mean there's no actual reason for that pain with and, and she will going to document that it is purely psychological so we will going to use f45.41 however if the pain is really related to a psychological factors meaning there's still an existing pain plus there's also a psychological pain for that case we have f45.42 we will going to use pain disorders with related psychological factors and your f45.42 should be coded together with your g89 pain not otherwise not other not elsewhere classified so psychological component of a pain with acute or chronic pain so the difference is your f45.41 is exclusively psychological pain i mean there's no psycho psychological factors i mean there's no acute pain or there's no chronic pain involved Unlike with F45.42, the provider already documented that it did, there is an existing acute or chronic pain. So in the documentation of the provider, it's very important that they were going to emphasize if it's like purely psychological pain or if it's um, <clears throat> psychological pain plus an acute or chronic pain. Pain. So that's the, that is the difference between your F45.41 and F45.42. Okay, next, we have mental and behavioral disorders due to psychoactive substance use. It's very important, guys, or I think it's well known that the common, disor common causes of behavioral disorders or mental disorders is associated to substance um, abuse, use, and dependence so it's very important guys in your coding <clears throat> that we um coding it accurately for the cause of your mental or behavioral disorder so first guideline we have your in remission when we say in remission it is the disappearance of the signs and symptoms because maybe a patient may be a substance abuse or substance use patient and there come a time that there's no longer signs and symptoms that causes i mean that 
is related to the substance abuse or substance abuse or substance dependent. So selection of codes for in remission. So there is an available code. So just keep in mind that when you go to category F10 and F19, we have an available at 0.11 and 0.21, wherein we can code for a um, cases which wherein there's an in remission. So how, when will you code, um, or when will you going to use that available code which is 0.11 and 0.21 which is there's an in remission. So selection of codes for in remissions for categories F10 and F19 mental and behavioral disorders due to psychoactive substance use. Categories F10.2 F19 with 0.11 and 0.21 requires the provider's clinical judgment. So it should be documented. It should be um, emphasized by the physician that it's really the case of the patient is already in remission. We cannot assume guys, it's very important to always document, I mean, look at the documentations that there's already an in remission. Okay, it's different with totally um, healed, no? Because in remission is just like disappearance of signs and symptoms or partial, complete. There are cases like that. So we always need to check the documentation for those cases. Okay. Um, guideline number two, psychoactive substance use, abuse, and dependence. In your exam, most of the time, they will going to ask questions about this. Psychoactive substance use abuse and dependence so the hierarchy guys is obviously it's like mild moderate and severe that's the hierarchy like it's use abuse and dependence when you say mild it's just the use moderate it's the abuse um severe is dependence but i'm not saying that it's it is the synonym of the word use abuse and dependence i'm just uh, saying like the severity of um, the use, abuse, and dependence. So when we say use, it's just like mild. Abuse is just like moderate. Dependence is already severe. So before moving on, I have the hierarchy here. It starts with the use, abuse, and dependence. So it's very important, guys, for you to document, I mean, to, to um, differentiate what is the difference between use, abuse, and dependence. When we say use, it's just like occasional use of alcohol, occasional use of, uh, of, of any substance, okay? Of like it's marijuana or occasional use of your cocaine, okay? So that's just use, okay? Let's just talk about alcohol, okay, guys. So, so if we're talking about like um, use of alcohol, it's just like occasional use of alcohol. So taking alcohol in mild, okay? So it's just like occasional. She will drink occasionally, okay? For abuse, um, alcohol abuse, for example, is like he's drunk every day, okay? He's taking in alcohol every day, but if the patient wants to stop drinking alcohol, he still can stop. Okay, he can still stop drinking alcohol, but when we talk about dependence, okay, the patient is already dependent to that alcohol, meaning he is everyday drunk, and he can no long he can no longer stop drinking alcohol even if he wants to stop it, because he is already dependent to that alcohol. So that's the difference. Like, use is just an occasional. Abuse is everyday drug, but he can stop if he wants to stop. But for dependence is everyday drug, and he can no longer stop even if he wants. And for these cases, the patient needs already, you know, your uh, behavioral health support. I mean, they need, they need to undergo rehabilitation already. Okay, so in, in your coding perspective, it's very important for you guys to know the difference for this use, abuse, and dependence because of the following guideline. Let's move on to that guideline. When the provider documentation refers to use, abuse, and dependence of the same substance. So we're talking about the same substance. It's very important for you guys to highlight that one. Same substance, like for example, alcohol, opioid, cannabis, or the marijuana. 
um, only one code should be assigned to identify the pattern of use based on the following hierarchy. Here's the hierarchy. We start from use, abuse, and dependence being the highest. Starts with abuse, abuse, and dependence being the highest. So, as per the guideline, when the provider documentation refers to use, abuse, and dependence of a single substance or a same substance rather, only one code should be assigned to identify the pattern of use on the following hierarchy. Meaning like for example, there's an alcohol use, alcohol abuse, and alcohol dependence. As per your guideline, you will going to assign only one code. So what should be the pattern? If both use and abuse are documented, documented, assign only the code for abuse. Based on the hierarchy, abuse, abuse is higher than the use. Okay, so you will going to code the higher, the highest most of the time. You will going to the code the higher hierarchy. Okay, so if both abuse and dependence, when we're talking about abuse and dependence, the higher one is dependence. Okay, so if both abuse and dependence are documented, assign only the code for dependence. So if use, abuse, and dependence are all documented, assign only code for your dependence. So if both use and dependence are documented, assign only the codes for your dependence. So based on my experience and the questions that they're going to ask most of the time, like, in the first line of the scenario, they will going to highlight the word use. And at the middle of the scenario, they will tell you that the substance, I mean, they will tell you that it's already an abuse. But the end of the scenario, they will tell you it's already dependent. So it's very important for you guys to always read the whole scenario when you are coding about use, abuse, and dependence because it's very important for you to capture the word the highest hierarchy in order to code uh, the appropriate code okay but keep in mind that we are going to the, we are discussing about the same substance so if the patient has like alcohol dependence and the patients already have also have opioid use or cannabis abuse like that you need to code the separately all those substances Okay, so even if um, the hierarchy will no longer matter because it's um, it's only applicable to certain one sub when we are talking about same substance only. So if, the, like, for example, the patient has a alcohol dependence, you code for alcohol dependence. And if the patient have opioid abuse, code for the op opioid abuse separately. And if, for example, the patient also have a cannabis use, code the cannabis use separately. Now, how we code the sequencing, um, code first the highest, like dependence first, then abuse, and then dependence. But it rarely happened, okay? So in the exam, they were going to ask the use, abuse, and dependence. Don't forget that, okay? Next, psychoactive substance use unspecified. So unlike with other categories that we have already discussed in chapter 1, 2, and 3, and 4, so there's also an, there's always an, ex, um, an option about the code for unspecified. So as with all other um, unspecified diagnoses, the codes for unspecified psychoactive substances like F10-9, F11-9, F12-9 to F99 should only be assigned based on the provider's documentation when they, when they meet the definition of reportable diagnosis. So these codes are to be used only when the psychoactive substance use is associated with physical, mental, or behavioral disorders and such as relationship is documented by the providers okay factitious disorder is imposed on self or mancho sense syndromes is a disorder in which a person falsely report or cause causes his or her own physical or psychological signs or symptoms i mean for the keyword it falsely report or causes his or her own psychological or physical signs and symptoms. For patients with documented factitious disorder and self mountain syndrome, assign the appropriate code for the subcategory F68.1. So what is Munchensen syndrome? So Munchensen syndrome by proxy or MSBP is a disorder in which a caregiver or a perpetrator 
falsely report or causes an illness or injury in another person so the victim under his or her care such a child or elderly or adult or person who has disability so the code for this one guys factitious disorder should be coded to the perpetrator so the condition is also referred to as factitious disorder imposed on another or disorder by proxy so the perpetrator not the victim receives the diagnosis because the patients who falsely, I mean, the, the person who falsely report the cause or cause the illness or injury to another person should be using the code for this F68 category. A sign code for F68.68A, 68 factitious disorder in imposed on another to a perpetrator's record. So for the victim, we're going to use for the adult uh, the abuse codes T74 for adult um, and child abuse neglect and other maltreatment confirmed while T76 for suspected. So your F68.8 should be used for the person who is um, faulty reporting or causing an illness or injury to another person. So that is your MSBP. So that's the guideline for your chapter 5 but the, the very important thing that you need to um, remember is the hierarchy of use abuse and your dependence so before moving on before you know before we end up this discussion we i'll just go over with those categories that we also have in your f codes we have your f20 and f29 we will encounter here the schizophrenia codes schizotypal states and delusional disorders so it's expanded with introduction of new categories we have delusional disorders remember there are different types of schizophrenia you have your catatonic schizophrenia so we have a several codes for that then that you can find those in your f20 to f29 categories we also have depression um you may encounter the codes for depressions or depression in your f32 and f31 so the causes may vary and it's really costly and debilitating so guys depression is a real illness it's uh, being recognized by the who and there's, also, there's an existing code for this so in your when you're coding depression it's very important to classify the type the severity and the episode it's very important that you capture those in the documentation so here's an example of depression's code we have major depression disorder single episode and we have mild so again, as per your guideline, it's divided by the type. Is it major depressions? Okay. The severity, is it mild or moderate? And the episode, is it recurrent or it's a single episode? Okay. If they will go into document like depression only, you have your F32.9 for unspecified your depressions. Okay. Don't forget that. It's very important to know the type, the severity, and the episode. Okay? We also have bipolar disorders, and it's still the same thing, coded by type, current episode, and the severity. So, as um, a tip for you guys, it's very important to um, be very specific with the uh, selection of your codes. You always need to have your keywords available before selecting those codes you need to be very specific so these um the my tip for co encoding your um chapter 5 f codes you need to have it word by word okay so bipolar disorder current episode manic without psycho uh, psychotic fit here and mild Bipolar disorder, current episode, manic severe with psychotic features. How would you know if there's a psychotic features, features rather, if there are delusions like that, there's such a, there's an hallucinations like that. So we can consider that there's already a with psychotic features. We also have behavioral syndromes. We have your anorexia, sufficient sleep syndrome, hypoactive sexual desire disorders. Any behavioral syndromes we may encounter in your chapter five. You have intellectual disabilities, you have your, you know, you have your mental retardedness. So, you may also encounter here in your category F72, severe intellectual disability and it's based on the IQ level of the patient. So, we have a code for mental retardedness available in your chapter 5. You also have ADHD, inattentiveness or 
overactivity and positivity or combination still you need to know the word per word you have your um type you need to know the severity and most of the time you also need to know the episodes so those are the other categories that you may encounter in your chapter five so that ends our discussion for your chapter five in our next video i'll discuss the chapter six diseases of the nervous system so happy coding hope everyone is safe if you're new to my channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell so that you will be notified every time i have my new upload thank you and be safe.